Can we survive injustice in an unjust world? Let's examine what we can do when we're the victims of injustices that will not be made right in this life. We'll examine the story of an unjust inheritance in Luke 12, 13 to 21, and Jesus' advice to the victim. Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, What should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. And then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, My friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, you'll die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Greed. Wicked people praise greed. Greedy people ambush their own lives, destroying their families. They take, but the righteous give. Greedy get-rich-quick schemes cause poverty. Greedy leaders destroy nations, look to their own gain like greedy dogs, out for dishonest gain, shedding innocent blood, oppressing and extorting. Greedy people feast on the suffering poor. Religious leaders are not immune to greed and wickedness. Don't let the cheater's greed ruin our lives as it has theirs. Greed is idolatry and cannot enter God's kingdom. Surviving injustice. An unjust inheritance. A sibling felt cheated. Wise parents are fair and create a legacy of family unity. Unwise parents create family trouble. Favoritism and greed over inheritance drive families apart. Life is filled with injustices in and outside the family. We can waste our lives in bitterness over wrongdoings, trying to right every grievance, and not having time for a living. It seems that Jesus was telling the young man to just let it go and get on with living a good life. Perhaps pursuing justice for ourselves is not always worthwhile. We don't need to fret if others are greedy and we miss out. Because a good life does not consist in an abundance of things. There's coming a day when God will set everything right. Being satisfied. Have you ever prayed for God to set things right, but it seems like he said no, or perhaps didn't even answer? A brother received a larger portion of an inheritance. Was he manipulative? Did he not defend his younger brother against unjust parents playing favorites? Jesus' advice was to avoid covetousness. The Greek word for covetousness is also often translated by the word greed and means lusting for a greater number of temporal things that go beyond what God determines is eternally best. If someone has swindled us out of worldly goods, let's realize that an abundance of possessions does not define a great life. Being satisfied with what God provides is a great life. Selfish species die. Recent scientific research has shown that selfish species die. For a species to thrive, individuals must learn to communicate and cooperate. Like the brother who took the largest portion of the family inheritance, greed isolates us from our tribes. Community and family members withdraw their support, and mutual trust is gone. Rather than living a shared life with mutual support and protection, the greedy brother is isolated and unprotected. Covetousness is therefore self-destructive behavior. 
Greed estranges those who would have been there in our hour of need. It isolates us from our support mechanism. Greed destroys the world, our nation, our families, and us. Even in nature, insects and sheep know instinctively that to survive they must share and cooperate. Good coveting. Covet simply means desire. Desire is only wrong when we lust after what's not ours. The Tenth Commandment deals with lust. Coveting what does not belong to us leads to lies, murder, theft, adultery, and so on. Jesus addressed the folly of covetousness in the story of the unjust inheritance and the parable of the greedy farmer. A brother was unjustly treated in a family inheritance. We don't need to lust after what others have rightly or wrongly gotten. It's also the case with the farmer and his barnyard retirement plan. Let's not trust in selfish preparations, but in God. Covet the best gifts, spiritual, and pursue the real purpose of life, to love. Not every injustice will be fixed in this life. Jesus tells us that those who treat us unfairly only hurt themselves and their families. He encourages us that being satisfied with our lot in life creates a far better life than all the ill-gotten gains of unjust people.